there's a certain mystique to the long YouTube video. Seeing a video essay coupled with a multi-hour runtime definitely goes a long way in making a video stand out. It can imply the creator behind it is especially passionate about the subject and spends a long time researching to put together a comprehensive piece, making it seem more valuable compared to videos on the same topic with a more digestible runtime. But looks can be deceiving. The most common factor to be blamed for the rise of long videos would be the YouTube algorithm. To heavily simplify it, YouTube decided to prioritize promoting videos with a high watch time to discourage videos essentially tricking viewers with enticing clickbait titles and thumbnails, but offering little to no substance in the actual content. Watch time only became more emphasized as time went on, and YouTubers eventually discovered that this could be exploited by creating longer and longer videos, growing their watch time and resulting in YouTube pushing the video harder. A thousand views on an hour long video is worth a lot more than 10,000 on a four minute video. Although this is really just a theory, no one truly understands how the algorithm works except for YouTube itself. The extra mid roll as you can squeeze into an hour long video certainly doesn't hurt. Recently I've also noticed that YouTube tends to continually push long videos you've watched a small percentage of on your homepage, and they never seem to go away no matter how much you click not interested. When you look at the landscape of YouTube right now, it feels like we're stuck between two extremes. Long videos that can sometimes feel like overly drawn out slogs, and one minute shorts that offer zero valuable information or artistic intent. The 5 to 10 minute video is becoming more and more rare. You pretty much never see videos under 8 minutes nowadays. And I worry that the push to make videos longer and longer is stifling creativity on the platform. I mean, why make a tightly scripted 6 minute video when you can draw it out or repurpose it as a section of a 50 minute video that'll get 10 times to fuse and more mid-roll ads? There are certain topics that require more than the typical 10 to 20 minutes to adequately cover. An easy example would be the commentary space, with videos commonly made to analyze the entire online life of a single creator. If we take a look at Sunny Fee2's 13 minute video on Boogie2988 and compare it to the hour long Turkey Tom video on the same guy, they give two completely different experiences. Sunny's video only gives an extremely broad overview of Boogie's career, focusing purely on his most controversial moments with little in terms of context. Whereas Tom's delves much deeper into Boogie's life story, forming a narrative and illustrating the context and motivations behind his compulsive lying and infuriatingly self-destructive actions. It provides an understanding of Boogie's character and allows you to understand how he got to where he is and form your own nuanced opinion on him. I think an easy way to differentiate good long videos and bad ones is that some videos are dense. They don't waste your time, but simply have a lot of information they want to communicate, thus necessitating a long runtime. Whereas other videos are just long. Think of those multi-hour game retrospectives, where 80% of the runtime is dedicated to summarizing the game's plot, painstakingly going over every cutscene and simply describing each gameplay section without offering much original outside of the occasional interjection of, uh, this is cool, but I don't really like this section. It's more of a game summary than a review. You really don't leave this video learning much or getting an experience you wouldn't by just, well, playing the game yourself. And a comprehensive video game review can be done well, like Matthew Mitosis's hour-long Devil May Cry playthrough slash review. This video is extremely tightly scripted, overview of the whole game. He goes into great detail about its development, deep mechanics, but he offers tons of unique and thought-provoking opinions on the game describing why certain sections work well, giving critiques of its worst sections, and contemplating how they could be improved. When it comes to the plot, he summarizes it in short sentences to provide context, but quickly moves back onto his transformative commentary, making it an engaging video that enhances your understanding and appreciation of the game, rather than just summarizing it. Looking at some of these channels characterized by their insanely long videos, it's clear that there are some corners cut. With very minimal editing, there isn't a lot to look at, and the videos can feel a bit meandering, as if a first draft to a script. I think they can get away with this since the vast majority of viewers aren't really watching these videos, but more so listening to them. I do this a lot too. These videos are used as background noise, something you half watch while multitasking, doing chores or grinding a game, rather than something you're fully engaged with. I don't think that goes for all long videos, of course. I think something nicely edited and tightly scripted, like an M Lemon video, warrants your full attention but some of these longer videos are clearly made with this shallow engagement in mind. They encourage a passive consumption of their content. They lack ambition, happy to exist merely as background noise, as you focus on something more important, not really a piece of art that truly engrosses and leaves an impact on you. 
This kind of passive consumption is taken to its logical extreme with watching videos while you sleep. It's something me and all my friends seem to do, and it results in the whole video being played all the way through multiple nights in a row, artificially ballooning its view count and watch time. It's such a common thing that recently channels have popped up created explicitly for this purpose. It's pretty funny, but ultimately this stuff is pretty harmless, right? Well, I think that passive consumption allows for much lower effort content to thrive on YouTube. It feels like some creators are purposely drawing out their videos and making them worse while being actively rewarded for it. Did you know that over 40% of YouTube watch time comes from TV screens? It's true, and a lot of people watch YouTube. So this technically makes YouTube the dominant streaming service, dwarfing even Netflix. And this is no accident. Stuff like the user interface and what content is promoted by the algorithm is carefully designed not just to keep you using YouTube, but to use it in the way YouTube wants. This is why every year or so, the YouTube layout is slightly adjusted. Small design changes can subconsciously push you towards interacting and giving more attention to different aspects of the site. For example, look at the recommended videos tab, becoming more and more personalized and cater to your taste, as well as just taking up more screen real estate, pushing you to keep clicking on that next video, staying on YouTube longer, and, especially if you're watching on TV, watching more ads. Although, it's pretty weird for me to imagine so many people choose the vastly inferior TV version of YouTube, I can see why it would be so dominant over traditional streaming services. For one, YouTube is free. But also, with 20 minute to hour long videos becoming the norm, it can cleanly fill in the time slot you would use to watch an episode or two of TV. Not to mention the pure wealth of high quality videos produced by YouTubers every day, filling whatever niche you may be interested in. It's infinitely more than any corporate production studio could ever hope to compete with. YouTube is fully intending to replace TV for younger generations, and they've practically already succeeded. I know I got pretty negative and a little conspiratorial there, but I don't hate long videos, and I do think they have a place on the platform. Hell, despite my bitching, I'd say that long video essays are my favorite video format. As with any artist tool, it's not as if it's inherently bad, it's simply up to the creator to utilize it well. A long, tightly scripted, masterfully edited documentary-like video is really something special. It can be a way for a creator to flex the skills they've refined over the years and create something genuinely impactful for the world to see. I think it really goes a long way in legitimizing YouTube as more than just a site for mindless funny videos that it used to be seen as. Creators nowadays have the freedom to make videos as long as they want and find an audience for it. I have faith that people who watch them can separate the lazy and cynical from the ambitious and impactful. Because the popularity of these longer videos, although frequently exploited, can also reward dedication when used honestly. Creating a genuinely great hour plus video takes an insane amount of effort, and I think that should be recognized and respected. 